Today, I'm going to show you how to improve your photography with composition. Today, I'm going to show you how to improve your photography with composition, so keep watching until the end to get all the tips and advice. Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brendan Diver, and if this is your first time here, I'll be giving free tips and advice on photography each week. Please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and click on the bell notification icon so you won't miss any videos in the future. The rule of thirds. One of the biggest ways that you can dramatically improve your photography, and it's free, is by changing your composition. You might have heard of the rule of thirds. It's usually the composition technique that beginner photographers start with. One thing to remember is, although this is called the rule of thirds, it's not set in stone. Look at this more as a set of guidelines. And as long as you know these guidelines, you can always break them. This rule is particularly easy to understand if you've got a grid view in your camera's viewfinder. You'll see that your view is divided into nine sections by two vertical lines and two horizontal lines. So let's look at the vertical lines first. Do you see the four points where the lines intersect? These are the thirds of the image. If you place your subject at either of these vertical lines, you'll have a far more pleasing image. Now let's look at the horizontal lines. Placing a horizon in an image at either the top line or the bottom horizontal line creates a far more interesting image than if the horizon is dead center of the image. When photographing a person, place the eye closest to the camera on one of the intersecting points. Framing. This has absolutely nothing to do with hanging photos on the wall. It's a composition technique that uses something as a frame around your subject in the scene. Framing a subject within an image guides the viewer's eye to your subject, and you can frame your subject using an endless variety of techniques. It can help you focus on the main subject in the image, and it'll draw your eye into the subject. Examples of man-made frames include archways, doors, windows, bridges, any kind of architectural structures. Natural frames include tree branches, caves, mountains, plants, shrubs. In this image of a Celtic Irish warrior, you can see how I use the old doorway to the ruins of a stone fort to frame the subject, and it draws your eye in on the subject himself. Leading lines. This is another photography composition technique for beginners, and because it's easy to pick up, and once learned, you'll never unsee leading lines. This is the equivalent of placing a you are here arrow on a map. Leading lines in composition do what they say in the tin. They are lines that lead the viewer's eye to the subject, the main focus of the image. Leading lines can also be used to direct a viewer's eye out of an image. In fact, leading line lines will direct the eye to wherever you want it to go because our eyes always follow lines. Like frames, leading lines can naturally occur in such as a row of clouds, rivers and a line of trees. They can also be man-made, for example, by railway tracks, roads and converging buildings. When photographing people, leading lines can be created by your subject's limb placement, such as arms and legs, and they can lead the viewer's eye to the subject's face. Leading lines don't even have to be straight. Think of a winding country lane or a river leading to the focal point of your image. Here in this image, we have the use of the leading line of the road, combined with the bright colours of the two young children. Remember, you don't always have to have your subject looking at the camera. In fact, every photo shoot that I do for a client, I always take several images of the subjects not looking at the camera. And usually from the photo session, these are the client's favorite images. So experiment, and just remember, you don't have to have your subjects looking at the camera. Negative space. Leaving space around your subject gives a breathing room within the frame. Using negative space is an easy way to create beautiful minimalistic photographs that hold a dramatic impact. Having large spans of empty space can really draw the viewer in. The human eye is designed to see reality in 3D through our two eyes, but the camera on the other hand is manufactured differently. As you all know, a camera sees in 2D through a single lens. This is why there's often a difference between the way that you see a composition and the way that the camera perceives it. It's for this reason that negative space is so important. It allows us to truly consider our composition and how the camera will see it. Never be in a rush taking images. Slow down, pause for a while, and look at your surroundings. By doing this and not rushing, you will see far more opportunities for getting different compositions of the scene in front of you, and it might actually surprise you with what you'll actually capture. Negative space surrounding your main subject can portray a sense of scale and size to the viewer. This can be useful if you're a landscape photographer, as shooting subjects close up can take away from the feel of the location from the audience. Stepping back from the edge of your shots can often have more impact to the image than if you were right in the middle of the action. 
The further back you are from your subject, the smaller they'll appear, achieving a greater atmosphere with a completely different feeling. This works really well when you're standing next to large structures and buildings, and you'll also see instances where hikers are stood atop of a mountain with a whole big panorama around them. Viewpoint. Changing your position and therefore your viewpoint can dramatically change the image. Getting down low to photograph your subject, either kneeling, crouching or even lying on your stomach, or positioning yourself at a greater height than your subject will create a very, very different image. Here's a little tip for you. When you are taking images, try taking images in landscape and portrait mode. If you're doing landscape images, try it in portrait. It might actually surprise you and very often you'll be really, really happy with the results. Different viewpoints will certainly add more drama to your photography composition than the expected standing height viewpoint that most people will take an image from. Triangles. Because triangles create a dynamic tension within an image, they make the composition really interesting. We're used to seeing the stability of vertical and horizontal lines. The diagonal lines of triangles are like a big arrow leading the eye into the center of the image. Of course, this doesn't mean that you have to run around looking for triangular shaped objects. Triangles can also be implied. Fill the frame. This is one of the easiest photography composition tips for beginners to learn and it's often overlooked. If the background is busy and distracting to the composition of your image, fill the frame with your subject. For example, if it's a person, zoom right in close to the face so you can cut away all the distracting objects in the background. Simplicity. When you photograph a single subject without any distractions, you draw the eye straight to the subject. The use of simplicity as a composition technique is very pleasing and very, very restful. Simplicity can also be created by getting in close and zooming in on an aspect of the subject. An example of this could be if you're doing landscape photography. It's great to get a whole big wide image, but don't be afraid to zoom in on maybe an object or a part of the frame. The left to right rule. This photography composition rule adheres to the principle that in Western languages, we read from left to right and it doesn't take into account the, language, the languages that read in other directions. Therefore, it states that we also read photographs from left to right. So if a movement is shown in a photograph, according to the rule of left to right, it's a good photography composition to have that movement going from left to right. Examples are, say you've got a motorbike racing past from left to right, a per person walking from the left of the frame to the right, and a bird flying from left to right. There's also nothing to say that you can't go from right to left either. Experiment and see what works best for you. If you break this composition rule and you have the space behind the subject, you cut short their journey and it kind of confuses the viewer's eyes. If it's, that's part of the story that you tell him, well, that's great, but otherwise it might look a little bit kind of awkward. You notice that this rule of composition ties in with one of our earlier photography composition tips about using negative space. It's another example of how the rules of composition often overlap each other. For example, this image of the girl on horseback. If she's over to the left hand side of the image with the horse tied up to the edge of the frame with the space on the right, it will look odd and unbalanced. So remember, photography is all about experimenting and trying new techniques and composition. As I say, these are called the rules of third, but the, these are only guidelines, so don't be afraid to break them. Again, another example of the rule of thirds broken. You'll see here that the horizon is dead center of this image. But what I've actually done is, you'll see in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see I've got the detail of the flowers closer to the camera. The sky has got a lot of nice formation, a lot of nice uh, detail and colours in it. Compose the image so that the setting sun is on the right hand column, coming down actually in the centre of the image. Again, there's a nice balance here between detail, colour, light, foreground interest, close to the camera. This image, that the horizon is nearly centre. But what I've actually done when I've composed this image is I framed the ruins of the castle on the right column coming down in the middle box. And you can see I've got most of the rock formation, the stony beach actually in the lower thirds. On the left four corners, you see there's a good balance of color with the greens, the yellows and the orange. Whereas on the right hand side, there's more kind of shadows and it's a little bit more atmospheric. So again, working with light, colours, composition can make for some really, really interesting images. I did frame this image with the ruins of the castle in the centre, but it just didn't seem to have the same effect. Another image of the Northern Lights taken here in Donegal. You see that I've got the horizon level with the bottom row. So there's one third of the foreground showing and the upper two thirds is taken with the sky. You see that there's a lot of interest and detail in the foreground and this draws your eye into the image. You see on the left hand a column coming down, you can see the detail in the rocks, 
and on the right hand side it would be a different type of uh, rock formation so again we've got on the very very top row we've got more of the reds and, and the purples middle row we've got more yellows and greens and the bottom row we've got more kind of rock formation if you think of your ruler thirds as like a cake and different slices or a sandwich you can see that this is actually a bit like a cake or sandwich the way that the different layers have built up the image as I said earlier in the video, the rule of thirds, I always look at it as a set of guidelines and not actually rules, they're not set in stone. Now you'll see here that I've got the horizon dead center of this image. Usually this doesn't work, but if you notice the fencing post, I have that on the intersecting lines on the third column coming down with two thirds on the right hand side. So by actually having the horizon in the center, but the fencing post offset, this can actually create a far more interesting effect so experiment away, um, there's no right or wrong rules in this, it's just whatever looks best for yourself. You see on the very, very top, you'll see where I've got most of the detail in the cloud, that's here actually in the centre box. And on the same column at the very, very bottom, you see where I've got kind of the, the twigs, kind of the, the heather there, you'll see that's a little bit more detail in the centre box. And I've also got the old lane on the left hand side. So again, the horizon's in the centre, but it works very well. You see this image of the Northern Lights taken here in Donegal. You see they've got the horizon placed in the lower third row, with the upper two thirds of the image being taken by the sky. You see on the bottom right hand corner, long exposure photography, and I've actually placed this composition where I'm actually on the intersecting lines. I think it just gives a nice little bit of interest. So this is something you can try by moving your focus to different parts of the image. This is an image I took of the Northern Lights here in Donegal several years ago. You see that I've got the horizon placed in the lower third of the image. I could have placed the ruins of this castle in the centre, but I thought personally that it would be better to be on the intersecting lines on the right hand side. You see the derelict buildings with the red door on the right hand column. And on the left hand side, it's a little bit, not as much information. Two thirds of the sky is above the horizon and the lower third is the foreground. If you notice where the ruins of the castle is, it's on that intersecting line and I've got the buildings on the right hand side. So it's a nice balance in this image and it works very very well. It's a good example of the rule of thirds. You can see this image, I have composed it in such a way that the fencing post is in the centre of the frame. The horizon, I've placed that in the top third with the foreground taking up the lower two thirds. On the left hand side you can see part of the hill and on the right hand side on that column you can see some of the rock and shrubs as well. So this is a good example of the rule of thirds coming into play with centre focus on the fencing post. You will see in this image I have composed the frame so that the horizon is in the centre of the image. I have the setting sun in the centre box and on the right of the setting sun you will see that I have got a bale of hay to add a little bit of interest. Over on the left hand side, the bale of hay that is nearest to the camera, you see I've framed it so that that's placed on that intersecting lines. On the top left hand corner, there's a little bit of detail where I've got the tree. And on the two right boxes on the top row on the right, you'll see where you've got the detail in the sky. The foreground then I have in the bottom row. So although that's, the horizon is actually in the centre of this image, it still works quite well with the way that I've composed it and framed the objects. With this composition, I've actually cropped the image to be more of a rectangular. You see that I've got the horizon on the bottom third row, with two thirds of the sky taking up the upper two. On the left hand column coming down, you see I've got the buildings on the left hand side, whereas on the right hand side it would be more of the landscape. Again, this is a nice composition that looks really, really well. Um, there's a nice balance between detail and of the actual landscape itself. You see how I've made use of the colours and textures. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. And if there's a topic that you'd like me to make a video on, please let me know in the comments below and I'll try and get that video made for you. See you again.